Hey everyone, Unoriginic here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the EasyCap 284 capture card. Now, three years ago, almost exactly to the date, I made an unboxing video about this little bad boy here, um, and we just got into a little bit of a review on it, and how I was setting it up and using it, and some observations that I've made. Since I made that video, there's been a hell of a lot of you guys that have been jumping in and asking questions about this that I just didn't have the capacity to answer at the time, um, and that I think really deserve being answered now so that you can make an informed decision over what you're going to do. Now, it's really good to see that a whole bunch of you guys are getting in there making game capture videos or, or gameplay videos, even though Copper's threatening to shut down the site and all of that shit. But regardless, we're going to jump in and have a look at how you can use this thing a little bit more effectively. I'm going to specifically talk about how to set this up to use OBS to do live streaming and also to capture video bigger than the 32 gigabyte capacity that I spoke about in this video here which is my original video um, so you, with OBS you can actually use something like this and capture I don't know like two terabytes of data if you wanted to I don't know if you have that much time but stick with me for this video if you've got that much time to kill it's not going to take long we'll jump straight into it and then I'll answer some questions from my last video at the end of this as well see if we can make sense of some of that So you're going to need a few things to have this working. You're going to need your EasyCap 284 capture card, which you can get with the link down below. You're going to need to have a computer, a PC, or a laptop, something that's better than the Surface Pro 4. To be honest, this is probably the like the minimum of what you want. Uh, I found that even when I was capturing stuff like Breath of the Wild on the Switch, I still had a lot of frame rate drops. You want something with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. I think this is eight. Don't quote me on that, I can't even remember. Uh, you're going to want a game console that has an HDMI output. The reason for that is that's what the video capture card uses. Um, if you have something like a Nintendo 64 or a GameCube, you can use the component cables. It has an adapter for that. I just can't advise you on how that works because I haven't got one myself to test out. If we can get this video to 10,000 likes, I'll go and buy a Nintendo 64 and try it out for you. But I'm not that much of a consumer whore to do that with the, with the likes, you know, I'm just, that was me being ironic. Um, the reason why I say you want to have a game console and, and not a PC is because if you've got a PC and you've got OBS, you can actually just use OBS to do a screen capture of your second screen or something like that. It's a lot easier than using a capture card and a lot, I don't know, a lot more convenient and cheaper and you don't need to do any of this convoluted stuff that we're going to be doing. So that's the, the main components of those. You'll also need a monitor as well because the, the Capture Cards website itself, even though you can watch it in OBS uh, and it will all work without actually having a second monitor, there is a huge delay in the timing. So what you're seeing in the OBS studio is a couple of seconds delayed from what's actually happening in the uh, game console. And unless you're precognitive, you're, you're not going to be able to play a game or no one's going to want to watch you play because you keep getting killed. Unless it's like a city builder. like. City Skylines, that's pretty sweet. You want to have two HDMI cables uh, pre-untangled. Pre I'm not as prepared for this as, as what I may appear. And you also want to have a mini USB cable as well for the, the capture card. This is used in my previous video as a power cable, uh, but for this it's power or slash PC. So this port is either the powering device or it allows it to connect to a PC. Now, I'll say up front that you want a good quality cable. I've used cables that have like a really piddly um, cord on them and they just they didn't have the quality to I plugged everything in I set it all up and no video streamed through to OBS it wouldn't pick up anything and then I swapped it out for a quality cable and then all of a sudden it worked perfectly so that's what I recommend that you have before you set this up if you don't have any of that uh, you're not ready for the next step. I'm just waiting for you to get all that stuff prepared. You ready? Okay, let's jump to it. So first let's talk about what you need for your PC. Obviously we spoke about you getting OBS. I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can download and install that. It's fairly simple. Uh, a wizard pops up and tells you what to do. Click follow the buttons. Uh, no brainer and then it's all set up. You also need to have some drivers for the EasyCap so that your computer will recognize it as a video capture device and not just some random USB installed device. So 
to do that what you need to do is just click on the other link in my description down below it's easycap.com slash article underscore read underscore 385.html and that will give you the latest drivers for easycap once you've downloaded the drivers just open up the file that you've downloaded and select drv install this application will run a wizard all you have to do is click next and then click update and then click finish once you've done that just click windows x and open up the device manager underneath device manager there's an option called sound video and game controllers and if you expand that you should be able to see a device that's called the it9910 grabber device and then in brackets hd now if you're not seeing that there and if it appears somewhere else it just means that the driver hasn't been installed properly in which case just go back to that download folder and use the uninstall and then just reinstall keep doing that until you get it working if it's not working i don't know what to tell you <laughs> it works for me uh you, you you might just need to shut things down start them up again and, and give it a go again uh anyhow we're going to jump into the next part of the process here so you've, once you've managed to get this recognized as a USB device, you're ready to set everything up for your stream or for recording the gameplay or whatever. So I'm just going to jump to the monitor over here and show you how it's set up. So for the setup, what you want to do is start with a gaming device and your monitor. I'm going to go with the Nintendo Switch in this case, just because it's on the same side as the input for the capture card. Place the HDMI cable from the Switch into the capture card's input port and then place another HDMI cable from the output to the monitor itself. Then I set up my PC and plug in the USB cable so that that runs to the capture card as well. And then you see a little indication light to show that the power is on. Now once this is all set up, one piece of advice that I will give you is don't plug your headphones into any port that will divert the sound from coming through the HDMI cable and what I mean by that is if you're playing on the Nintendo Switch don't plug your headphones into the headphone jack point on the top of the console once it's plugged in because this will divert all the audio that would normally be coming through the HDMI cable and it'll make it come straight out here which means that it won't pass through the capture card. The same if you're playing with a PS4 and you plug it straight into the headphone jack on the DualShock controller this will divert the audio and nobody will be able to hear that once you play it back. So I know a lot of people do like to play with headphones regardless and what I recommend is just finding a headphone jack or a port on the monitor that you're using and then the audio will still pass through the HDMI cable and it will still output from the monitor but it will just go through a headphone port and into your headphones so that nobody else has to hear you play. The other question I get about this is that uh, people that have a party, they're playing online games and they want people to be able to hear their party and they want to be able to talk to their party at the same time. I don't know what the solution is for you I'm afraid uh, aside from splashing up for an Elgato. If you buy an Elgato there is a special cable that you can use that allows you to split the audio that comes out of like your DualShock controller or whatever and also allows you to capture the actual audio that of you speaking into the microphone um, going back in. So that is an option for you if you want to splash out the high price tag for a, a, an Elgato capture card. But yeah more or less if you if you're in this to capture online play and that sort of thing, uh, it's probably not the one for you because it doesn't have that option of splitting out voice. So there is that to consider as well. Once the PC is turned on and the monitor is turned on, you should also get a little green light to indicate that the HDMI uh, output source is being recognized and that whatever the image is that's on the gaming device is being passed through to it. Then you need to update the driver on your laptop or your PC. I suggest doing this before you turn on OBS otherwise it runs into some issues. Once it's all installed and looking good if you open up the device manager and just make sure that the IT9909 or whatever it was that we spoke about before is showing underneath the sound video and game controller segment of the device manager menu then you should be all good to open up OBS. Once you've opened up OBS Go down to Sources, select Add or the plus button, and select Video Capture Device. It'll ask you to give a name for the Video Capture Device. You can enter something if you want to, or just leave it as Video Capture Device and select OK. And then you get a sub-menu that asks you to select the device that you want to capture from. It should default if you're using a laptop to like a webcam or something like that. But from the drop-down menu, you should be able to see that IT990. I, I really should be reading this as I'm doing it. It's, it's the device from before. Here, here is a screen capture of it so you understand. 
once you've selected that and you have the game console running you should be able to see whatever it is that's displaying on the monitor that it's plugged into also displaying in the studio screen and one quick little reminder as well is just to click the transition button here between the preview and the program windows uh, what that does is that moves whatever is showing in your preview window over to the program window and it's the program window that is actually recorded when you click the start recording button so from here you can select start recording and this will actually record to a predetermined folder directory on the PC that is plugged in. So if you want to at this point you can actually get an external hard drive or an SD card or a USB card that has a lot of memory and select that, select record and you can just record until that baby is full. This should answer the question that a lot of people had on my old video about the recording limitations where I was doing it in 10 minute bursts. If you do it this way around, as long as the PC you're using is, is pretty grunty, it should be able to record without any frame drops and it should all go onto that device that you're using without any limitations aside from how big that device actually is. One quick piece of advice as well if you're using a PlayStation 4 is to go into the settings and under system you'll notice an option called enable HTCP which automatically has a tick box on it. You'll need to deselect this if you want to use a capture card to capture anything on the PlayStation 4. This will stop some apps from working, things like Netflix and stuff like that just to make it a little bit harder to pirate those videos. Uh, but more or less you will need to have this deselected on PlayStation 4 and also a similar option I think for Xbox One if you're wanting to use this capture card to switch. Luckily it doesn't have this option. But that's the first part of this video done and dusted, that's how you can set it up for streaming or for video recording onto a PC. Uh, the next part's going to get a little bit more technical with how you use YouTube and there's going to be a lot of stuff censored because I'll be using my own YouTube channel to show you what you need to do to set up a live stream. So now I'll just show you guys what you need to do to get something like YouTube to be able to talk to the stream that you're making with OBS. And I think you need to have a certain threshold before you can start streaming. It's over. One. Thousand! What? One. Thousand? There's no way that can be right! Can it? I think it's right. What you want to do is first of all open up your YouTube account and do something like create a video or a post and select go live. This will open up your YouTube studio and from here you can create a new stream or you can copy one that you've already done uh, and you can create a title and you can select if you want it to be public, if you want it to be unlisted or private which is weird that you do a private uh, live stream but it's a good way to test things out and see how they look. Um, select the description blah 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 you guys know all this because you're already doing it um, you can select to schedule it for later which I like to do because I think it lets people know when it's coming up uh, and then you can just pick a date and a time that you want to go live and then miss that time entirely trying to set up your capture card to actually be recognized but hey that's that's another issue um, select you know your description and what have you and click create stream I'm not gonna worry too much about that stuff you guys are smart you can figure it out I know you can do it um, but once you've clicked create stream and you're into this phase you get this thing here which is called a stream name or key which it tells you to paste in the, into the encoder I'm not going to show you what it looks like because it's unique to me but I am going to click copy and it successfully copied it to my clipboard so over in OBS I need to go into file uh, I need to go down to settings and I need to click on stream and in stream key I just post that paste that in post it in paste it in uh, and click apply and OK. So once I've done that I should be able to click start streaming uh, but it won't let me do it at the moment because uh, at the moment I'm using OBS to record this uh, which is going to cause some difficulty but basically you click start streaming it'll tell you that it's streaming and then over here on YouTube um, when you click go live you click go live and it will give you a little timer in to say that it's getting ready it's going live and then it basically gives you a feed of how your stream is doing which doesn't really relate to the capture card or the setup so much as your uh, internet connection or, or bitrate and that sort of thing so uh, that's something to consider as well when you're doing this you probably want fiber or something pretty decent internet connection in New Zealand sucks which is why all my streams are normally pretty terrible um, but that's more or less the setup of a live stream, the setup of how you want everything to be running to be able to use it pretty well. Um, you'll find your own little nuances that you want to introduce to let it run a little bit better. Um, but for the rest of this video, I'm basically going to run through uh, 
um, one capture with the Elgato and one capture with an easy cap with a little title to show you which is which just so you can see what the quality is like on a sort of high def game um, and you can decide for yourself let me know in the comments down below what it is that you like about that and uh, also let me know um, if there are any other questions that you have now there have been a ton of questions on my old videos and while this stuff is playing I will answer those questions and let you know what my honest answers are Jibzy Luigi asks, Do you know how to reset the file name for the capture card? My file name has already reached encode underscore 200. I was to reset it one time, I don't know if pressing too many times or holding the record button before plugging the power, but the problem is after you remove the power brick it goes back to the original file name. So I think what he's trying to ask here is how do you stop files from overwriting each other because the file name just chooses the same one uh, once you hit encode 200 or, or once you start a new session after the capture card loses power. I'm not sure if that's actually a problem or a thing it sounds like it has affected him but for me i just move everything off my usb stick and put it onto a like a external hard drive or something like that or i rename the files to what it actually is or what session i recorded it in because i i just record so much stuff that sometimes i lose track of what it's for uh, so that's one solution that you could use there Jibzy, just to avoid that overwrite issue <laughs> Delucado7 asked, I have a very old version of the same brand and one I have is the 2GB limit. I think it means one problem I have is the 2GB limit when recording but automatically starts a new file when the 2GB limit is reached. Which is awesome, it sounds like he has some firmware update or something within his version that uh, it was just start a new file. Which I think I used to have on the EasyCap uh, 280 or 282 um, which broke down. So yeah, I think... I think some systems have it in place that if it reaches a limit it will start a new file for you, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, Beck said, thanks for your video, I'm from Aleppo and I heard you speaking about it, so thanks man. No, thank you dude, that's awesome, nice comment. Not a fan of nature grease? Not only behind glass. Otherwise, nature's not a fan of me. Hold that thought. Knight 3 said, when you said there's a limit on capturing, does that mean that I can't shove a 1TB card in there or a 500GB SD card and just do my thing and not worry about the time? So I think I've indicated in this video that you can't do that, but if you use OBS in a computer, uh, then you can get around that limitation by recording it directly to the external hard drive by using a file path destination for your external, uh, your external hard drive or something like that, or just if you have enough room on your PC, just recording it directly to your PC. Bronson says, Hey man, if you wanted to record audio at the same time as gameplay, I would try recording audio through Audacity and have a marker being something like 123123 and moving the cursor on the main title screen. Which makes sense, I used to do that um, in games I'd jump 123 and say that I'm jumping or I'd unpause, I'd say I'm pausing now and unpause the game and that would be my visual and audio marker to line up the audio. Um, which yeah, Audacity is a great system, I'm using that right now actually to record this narration. But when you're using OBS, you can actually hook up a mic by using, uh, you know, you can add that as a source and you can actually record the audio native as well. The issue with that is it all goes onto the same file, so if you've got the mixing wrong, if this the game file is too noisy, or if your audio isn't loud enough, or if there's an issue with your PC fan being really noisy like mine is right here, I'll leave it in so you can hear what this sounds like without me editing it in Audacity. Um, then you don't get the opportunity to do that fine-tune editing because all of the sound goes onto one audio track, I believe. And, and then you can't do that fine-tune audio tweaking that you might want to get a really good quality product. HK Philip asks, so do you know any capture card that can use mic and HDMI at the same time? Um, and I think I've indicated that it is the Elgato with that stupid splitting cable that nobody seems to like. Tears asks, can I connect my phone to it and then record my phone receives a video file? 
can I do that and don't have a PC or laptop? Um, so going back to my first video, you can use this capture card to record straight to an, a USB stick or an SD card if you have an adapter and then you could put that into your phone and have that video on your phone. Um, I'd say if you don't have a laptop or a PC, there's not a lot of really good editing that you could do to a video uh, of gameplay or anything like that, so I don't know why you'd want to do that. My recommendation would be to look at what it is that you're trying to achieve uh, and why you're doing it on the phone and, and maybe that'll answer your question. Vlad Piero um, asked if he can use this to record gameplay from his PS4 and also from his laptop Steam, um, but would he have to record the audio separately? So. Uh, I think in this video again we've indicated that you can record audio and video at the same time. I just mentioned before why that's sometimes a bad idea. I would recommend using Audacity and recording it separately. When it comes to recording your laptop gameplay, you can actually use OBS to record that directly and just use Display Capture and record that. Uh, and you don't need to have a capture card or a dedicated capture card. Depending on what you're recording and the frame rates and everything, OBS might crush that a little bit. You can get um, an Elgato if you're using a PC for example you can get an Elgato like inbuilt card that you just plug directly into the motherboard that has much better resolution and quality um, but I don't know too much about that I, that's something you'd need to look into Nordic Warrior Gaming asked does this need a computer to install or can it just work recording gameplay on its own I think that's what he said uh, so yes it, it can just record gameplay on its own if you have a USB stick but what you do with that footage once it's recorded, uh, generally you'd want a computer to upload it unless you just want to upload random clips of you doing cool stuff on like a PlayStation or, or a Nintendo Switch or whatever. But those systems have buttons to record that stuff anyway, and then you can just upload it directly to YouTube. And you used to be able to do Facebook with uh, PlayStation, but they've removed that. You can still do that with Switch. So I don't know why you'd want to splash out $60. It depends on what you're trying to capture, my man. Jimmy the Gamer, he asked, um, he just wanted to know that when you have the headset or mic plugged into the PS4 controller and you record gameplay with the capture card, does it record the mic too? So again, and I think I've explained this in enough detail, but just to revisit this, if there is no audio going in or out of the HDMI cable, if it's redirected to come directly out of the game controller, um, then there's no audio going to the monitor and it's not captured by the game capture card and that includes the mic as well um, unless you have a mic set up to record in audacity or record directly to obs then through that separate mic you'd be able to hear your narration but you wouldn't be able to hear any of the game audio or any of the party audio as well and that's why you really need if you want to get that level you need the elgato or something similar i don't know i haven't checked out what latest chinese knockoffs there are on the market but there's probably something else that can do that as well STFU Gaming said, I wonder, so if I want to use this on my laptop, can I just plug in the HDMI out of my laptop into the input and record my laptop? Thanks. Um, so I think with that, you also need to have a monitor plugged into it as well. The capture card actually won't record anything if you don't have an output monitor on the other end of the out HDMI cable to, um, to show the image. It's a weird issue, but it's one that I've discovered actually exists. And again, if you're using a laptop or gaming on a laptop, you probably just want OBS to be set up and just record stuff directly with the display capture option in OBS. Duarte FTW, I think I'm saying that right, said, the issue with the 10 minute segments, can it be resolved with the latest firmware? Are you still having the same issues? I am still having the same issues. I haven't updated the firmware. I don't know how to do that, um, but I'm living with it and, and just working through. I find it's better as well because sometimes it does drop some frames so having it in 10 minute segments helps you identify where that frame drop is a little bit easier as well and that's just that's just an issue with the hardware itself you know it's cheap hardware you get what you paid for and lastly Kanye as gaming said I got this for like $87 rebranded by Hop Century there's been a lot of this exact same hardware with slightly different rebrands on it as well so I recommend just shopping around you'll find the same thing on different uh, you know different outlets or from different vendors with just slightly different branding on it But it's essentially the same plastic if, even if it's in different colors and it's the same hardware inside So I'll leave a link at the bottom of this video if you guys want to see the one that I bought I think pretty sure it's the cheapest one you can get of this make um, 
Amazon tends to be a little bit more expensive. You just have to wait like six weeks for it to arrive. Uh, but that's the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out. You've been watching some Jedi Fallen Order with various different capture methods. If you want to see me play that for the first time as well as Pokemon Sword and Shield, which I was going to try and play at the same time, but it turned out that all my kids were sick, played it with me. So I wasn't doing a true two games in one go type deal but uh, that's linked here and the original review is also linked here as well if you want to go and check that out i've been unoriginic thanks for stopping by and i'll see you guys again real soon